Hey card making friends, welcome back. It's Sandy here and I have a couple fun new cards to play with and share with you today. I'm working with these awesome new products from Scrappy Tales. The Layering Spring Birds die set. Uh, this is cute. It has two little birds in it and it's layers of different pieces to create the bird. And so I've separated them. The larger bird at the top, the bottom is the skinny bird and the section in the middle are pieces that go for both. And I'm showing you my hands. Please Please excuse the paint on my hands. I am double timing it right now, trying to get some painting finished in the house. And it, while it's drying, I'm building this video. The second die set we're playing with today is the layering bluebird or the blue jay. And if you don't use the stripes in the set, he can become a woodpecker. And finally, we have the spring birds and blooms, and I'm using this for a sentiment, but I'm going to swing back around and play with some of these stamps because they're really pretty. There are different ways that you can create the birds. I'm going to do the large bird with uh, cutting him out in white and ink blend him. The little bird, I'm cutting out his overlay pieces out of blue cardstock. So I'm just cutting down my cardstock so that I can fit it all into uh, one swoop through my die cutting machine. And I'm showing you my fabulous new scissors from Spellbinders. I just love them. They're non-stick if you're looking for a good pair of scissors. All right, so I'm running this through the die cutting machine twice to make sure that I get nice clean cuts. And you'll see that I do because they come out beautifully on my cutting plate. And we're going to settle in and use some of these Simon Says Stamps inks and color up the little birdie. I'm going to start with a little one. And as I said, the overlying pieces are blue. I cut the chest piece out of white so that I could ink blend it for a little bit of a softer blue. So I am adding that with a small ink blending tool. And I am using my embellishment wand to hold it down. Okay, so I finished with that piece. Now I need to do his feet and his beak. And I'm going to be doing those in the latte color of brown. And these little pieces are really small. That's why I'm using my embellishment wand. Uh, the wax end is a nice easy way to pick up all of these pieces and uh, be able to move them around. Okay, so starting with the latte, I am ink blending his little beak and then both of his little feet. I'm going to go to the mocha for his feet so that they're a little bit darker. And it just takes a minute. I'm also working on top of my glass mat. That's why you see that there's ink sitting there. Nice and easy to clean this up though. Okay, so using my tweezers to move all those pieces out of the way so that I can clean the brown off because I'm going to start gluing this little guy together. I'll zoom in here a little bit. I'm using my uh, Barely Art Glue because it's got a nice fine tip on it and that is perfect for putting these little guys together. And you also want your tweezers to hold on to the tiny pieces and you want your embellishment wand also to pick up the tiny little pieces. Now I'm going to ink blend just where his tummy is and underneath his wing so that there's a little bit of light blue showing for a little bit of contrast when I start gluing the blue pieces on top. So we're going to add his little tummy first and you'll notice on the base piece that there are lines etched in and they show you exactly where to add all of these little pieces. So there's two ways that you can go about adding these. You can do as I'm doing right now and pick up the pieces with tweezers, add the glue to the back and lay them in place. And you want to move them around and get them set. Also make sure that they're covering as much as possible the outside white edge. I do come back and uh, ink blend over top of that just to blend the white in a little bit because it does show up in a couple of spots. Okay, so I'm adding my tail piece now. And these are all the larger pieces. When you get to the really, really small pieces, it's easier sometimes to go the other way. So this time I'm going to add the glue to the tail and then I'm going to use my embellishment wand and pick up that tiny piece and add it. Now we're doing the feet in the same manner, adding the glue right to the base piece and then adding the overlay. And these work up quite quickly. I have this sped up just a tiny little bit, um, but it didn't take me too long to put these birds together. They were kind of fun. I like all the layering pieces and they look very lifelike. Okay, so I'm adding his little head piece and you want to pop it up a little bit so that you get that little pokey sticking out there. Okay, 
Next we need to add his little beak. So again, I'm adding some glue and popping his little beak on there. And then I'm going to come in with my blending brush, add a little bit of the dark blue around the top where all the pieces are added. This will get rid of any of the white showing from the base piece. And I did get a little bit of blue on his beak. So I'm bringing back in the latte and I'm going to fix his little beak. And then I'm also going to go around his little feet and get rid of any of the white showing there as well. So that finishes him. We just need to add his eyeball. So there's two dies, two tiny round dies. One of them makes the white pieces for the eye for both the birds. And then the second even tinier die makes the little black inserts for both the birds. So you want to grab the smaller of both of those for this little guy. And I'm trying to figure out which way is up on this tiny little piece of black. It really doesn't matter. And you want to pop him into place. And there we go. There's our little birdie all finished. On to the next one. So the next one, we are going to ink blend the entire thing. I'm starting with this blue and I'm adding a little bit around where his wings are and a little bit onto his tummy. And then I am going to start ink layering the overlays and I'm putting a darker coat of blue on this and I'm using my tweezers I don't suggest you do that because they have a fine tip on them and I was a poking a hole in his poor little wings so again I've switched over to my embellishment wand uh, it's got a blunt end so it doesn't damage your little pieces while you're ink blending them okay so we're working on his wing I think that was his head now I'm going to the medium color of the blue ink and working on the topper piece of his wing. Got that done and I need the tail piece and that's this last little piece here. These are tiny little pieces. They're hard to hold on to to get the ink on them. Okay, so I think I have most of the pieces. Oh, I need this piece here too. This is the bottom part of his wing and you'll see uh, as I put it together. It goes underneath the big piece. Okay, so moving those out of the way so that I can clean up the blue ink so that I can do his uh, beak and his feet. And again, I'm doing those in latte. And in the same manner, I'm going to hold on to them with my little embellishment wand and I am going to sponge the ink on. These smaller brushes work great for doing these tiny little pieces. But the birds are very realistic and they're they're beautiful when they're all put together. They're definitely worth the work. And these dies cut beautifully as well. There's no little paper shards on the outside edges. They've done a really nice job on their dies. Okay, so the last little bit there on his beak, I think. Note that was a foot. Clean up my ink and we can start putting this little guy together. So again, adding the glue. And I'm going to start with a large piece of his wing. And you see, I'm just showing you where the outline is. And turn the bird, get it to fit just so. There we go. And then this darker piece is the under part of his wing. And it gets tucked in right there. I think the ink blending, I like it better than cutting out of the cardstock um, because the colors are a little bit more muted and they blend together a little bit better. I don't know, maybe it's just me. I, I like the feel of the finished of the blended ink. It's softer. Okay, putting his little tail in there. Time for his little headpiece. And I could have done that in dark blue, I guess. I kind of like the light trying to line it up with the white edge, adding his little beak now. I like this little tubby guy. He's cute. <laughs> he is my favorite of the two birds. Okay, adding the white piece for the eye. And there is a little mark on there uh, for where to put the little black piece as well. There we go. And then we're just going to add his little feet. So next up, I'm going to play with some Lindy's Magicals and we're going to make a fun background for this card. Okay, and again, you can come in with your uh, ink blending tools and you can add a little bit like I'm doing with this beak. I got a little white 
spot right on the end. So I'm fixing that and also fixing his feet. Just so he's perfect. Isn't he cute? I love him. All right, I am using my uh, Misty Not So Sticky Matte, as you will see momentarily. <laughs> the Lindy's Magical Colors that I'm using today are Time Travel Teal, Tibetan Poppy Teal, Hydrangea Blue, and Lucky Shamrock. And one thing I will tell you about these is um, there is no names on the bottom of these little pods, so you want to put the lids like behind so you're getting the right lid back onto the right little pot. I am starting by spritzing my piece of watercolor paper on my not-so-sticky mat. <laughs> and you will see that it starts to raise. If you have this problem, take out your pixie spray and spray your mats to get your sticky back. I have been using these for building a lot of backgrounds and um, I'm messing up the sticky. So it's not the sticky mat's fault, it's me. I'm using them for something that they weren't necessarily made for. So you want to spritz on there some water, then you want to use a fan brush and load with some of the powders and then keep spritzing to dilute the powders and pick up the piece to move it around. I'm holding on to it, trying to get it to stick to my sticky mat. I finally give up. This piece is bigger than I need it to be, so I use my thumb to hold it in place so that I can pick it up and move it around. And once you're happy with your blend of colors, I like to go back in and add a little bit just to cause a little bit of starburst in some of the spots. And if they don't burst quite as much as you want them to, give them a little spritz and get them going. Okay, so here's where I start to get very blue fingers. So we'll add that to my white paint in the messy finger category. And I'm kind of happy with that. I'm just checking my bird to make sure it's light enough that my bird will still show up and uh, bleeding off any of the extras. One thing I will tell you, these little powders get everywhere. So once you're finished, take your cloth and clean off your tools and then spritz your work surface and wipe it dry so that you don't have any of the blue carrying into your next project. All right, we did some stenciling on the back. I wanted to do a little bit of multimedia. I grabbed a couple of my Tim Holtz stencils to do this. Uh, the first one is Blossom Layering. I think the second one is called Ringer Layering Stencils. I unfortunately have two very similar and I didn't put them back into their cases uh, when I was finished with them the last time. So um, I'm going to link both of them on my blog so that you can see which ones are which. Just a quick sidestep about the branch. I cut it out of some craft colored cardstock. And again, this is from the uh, Leering Blue Jay die. And then I added all the flowers and I did them exactly the same, but they look different because they're going in opposite directions on the cards. So here's where I'm going with the cards. So to do the stenciling, First off, I'm going to attach the stencil. I am using a little bit of uh, post-it tape to protect the rest of my surface that I don't want any of this on and a couple of magnets from uh, my magnetic board. I'm using uh, gold metallic rubs and mine are really old. Uh, I have them from a previous thing that I used to do. Uh, but you can still get these in a different format from Simon Says Stamps and they are called Craft Kit Metallic Rub-Ons. Again, I will link to them over on my blog. You could also use Luster Polish. There's a nice gold there. Uh, you could also use paste if you wanted to. Tonic Studios has a nice gold and so does uh, Pick Up Fence Studios. Anyway, back to what we're playing with here. I'm using a skinny blending brush. This is one of the waffle flower ones and I'm just adding roughly um, and checking it a little bit of these uh, gold rubs I don't want it to be solid I want some of the blue to show through and so I'm not being particularly careful about exactly how much of it I put on there and I'm going to do the bottom right corner now and I decide obviously to flip this around to the other way and again the magnets that I'm using come with my glass mat and I will also link to them this is an absolutely awesome glass mat I use it now all the time every time I'm building something I build it on this glass mat 
Again, I am finished with this, so I'm going to pull these off. Then I'm going to addition my branch and my bird on this card to make sure that I like where it's going. And then next, we're going to grab the Misty and do our sentiments. So I got my birds secured in there. I have still not glued them down. I have all the pieces just sitting in place. And I have come back to the Spring Birds and Bloom stamp set for a sentiment. And there's quite a few different sentiments here for almost every occasion that you can think of. I finally decided on happy birthday because I'm really short on birthday cards. And so I'm just going to grab that. I'm using VersaClaire Fine Nocturne ink. This is my favorite black ink for doing sentiments. It's really, really black. And I have to stamp it two or three times for each one of these cards because, again, uh, the background's watercolor paper, so it's lumpy. So give it a couple of stamps to make sure you get a really, really good, solid image. There we go. Here's my little birdies. They're all glued together. Everything's in place. So my final is I'm going to embellish, and I'm using the Studio Keisha Hibiscus Pearls for my flower centers. And I use the small ones because all the flowers are obviously very small. And I'm just gluing them all into the center Again, using my very handy embellishment wand. And here we go. Here's my two finished cards. There's lots of bling to them because, of course, the uh, Lindy's powders have mica in them, so they're shimmery. And then we've got the luster from the rub-ons. And then we've got our pretty birds. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. And uh, links down below over to the supplies that I used. Also a link over to my blog. And you can find all the materials there along with a uh, tutorial uh, of the breakdown of what I used. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving me a thumbs up. I would certainly appreciate that. And until next time, toodles!